Hello all students and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I will be explaining the concept of receptor potential. This concept is covered in page 191 of your book and we will be focusing especially on document C, the one I have displayed over here. I will be using my simulator to explain how the sensory receptor responds to stimulations of increasing intensities. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the simulator and it's showing a sensory receptor, the Pacinian corpuscle over here. And the different recordings, the upper recording, this one, shows the value of the pressure applied to the Pacinian corpuscle. This oscilloscope shows the receptor potential because its, sense, its recording electrode is inserted into the sensory receptor. So the membrane potential that this recording electrode reads is actually the sensory receptor's response to the stimulation and therefore it is the receptor potential. While this recording electrode connected to this oscilloscope is inserted into the fiber and therefore it either reads a resting potential or action potentials. Okay, so let's start. Initially, there's no pressure applied to the Pacinian corpuscle and consequently we can only see a resting membrane potential within the sensory receptor and within the fiber. I'm going to apply a weak pressure now. So this is the value of the pressure we applied. And as you can see, this is the change in the membrane potential recorded within the sensory receptor. So this is the receptor potential. The amplitude of this receptor potential is rather low, as you can see on the screen of the oscilloscope. And consequently, there are no action potentials recorded in the fiber. Okay, I'm going to press S now to show you the exact value of this amplitude. So it's a bit lower than negative 50 millivolts, negative 50 is the threshold of depolarization as you may know and this receptor potential is clearly lower than negative 50 millivolts and that's why there are no action potentials recorded in the fiber i'm going to increase the pressure applied to the pacinian corpuscle and now it will be moderate pressure let's apply the pressure Okay, so note that the pressure has increased and also note that the amplitude of the receptor potential has increased as well. Okay, so the receptor potential is above negative 50 millivolts. This is the negative 50 millivolts line and this is the region where the receptor potential exceeded negative 50 millivolts. You can clearly see the action potentials within the axon, within the fiber of this neuron. They have an amplitude of 100 millivolts, a constant amplitude of 100 millivolts. But they disappear beyond this point. So beyond this point, there are no action potentials recorded in the fiber, despite the fact that the pressure is still the same, is still moderate we only see action potentials during this time interval and not during this time interval. So why is that? Now, this particular point can be easily explained by focusing on the value of the receptor potential at this point. You can see that the receptor potential drops below negative 50 millivolts beyond this point. Okay? So, Despite the fact that the pressure applied is still the same, it's constant, the amplitude of the receptor potential decreases with time. 
the amplitude of the receptor potential decreases with time. This corresponds to the adaptation of the sensory receptor to a constant stimulation. Actually, the Pacinian corpuscle is a rapidly adapting sensory receptor. So that's why the amplitude of the receptor potential decreases with time. And as it drops be below the negative 50 millivolts, the threshold of depolarization, there are no action potentials generated beyond this point in time. Okay, you can also notice how as the amplitude of the receptor potential drops, the frequency of action, the frequency of action potentials actually drops as well. The, the action potentials become more spaced. You can see we have a tight space over here, a greater space over here, and an even greater space between these two action potentials over here. It's because the amplitude of the receptor potential is, is decreasing. Let's now increase the intensity of stimulation even more. The pressure applied will be now strong. Okay, so the pressure is now the highest, and the amplitude of the receptor potential reached a higher amplitude, an even higher amplitude than the one recorded uh, for a moderate pressure. Okay, so it's way above the negative 50 threshold of depolarization, and if we look at the recording of the action potentials, we can clearly see a very high frequency over here, which tends to decrease over time. However, the action potentials can be clearly seen throughout the period of stimulation, and it's because the amplitude of the receptor potential remains higher than negative 50 millivolts throughout the entire time interval of applying the pressure. Okay, so that's why we see action potentials throughout this whole time interval. And as we said earlier, it is the decrease of the amplitude of the receptor potential which causes the frequency of action potentials to also decrease with time. So to wrap up, the amplitude of the receptor potential is not like that of the action potential. It doesn't obey the law of all or none. It's actually a graded potential. The receptor potential is a graded potential, which means that its amplitude increases with the increase of the applied intensity of stimulation. And for the Pacinian corpuscle, applying a constant pressure leads to an adaptation of the sensory receptor to this pressure. This adaptation is translated by a decrease in the amplitude of the receptor potential as time passes. The final point is that no action potentials appear in the fiber unless the amplitude of the receptor potential exceeds the crucial point, the threshold of depolarization, which is negative 50 millivolts. And this frequency of action potentials is higher, is higher at the beginning because the amplitude is higher at the beginning and it drops over time because the amplitude of the receptor potential drops over time as well. So that's it for this quick tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or any remarks, please post them in the comments below. Thank you for following up and have a nice day.